think combat casualty care really touches on everything we do as an organization. So if you look at our brand, you know, our brand is a combat medic on a knee taking care of a casualty. And so in my mind, combat casualty care touches everything we do uh, and really is kind of woven throughout the culture of Army medicine. If you think about it, um, we are not going to be able to evacuate people in the future uh, as aggressively as, as we did in the past. I mean, our air platforms are going to be much more at risk, um, and, but we're still going to need that capability on the ground. I think this whole notion of prolonged care is, uh, is going to be very important, especially if we're looking at, as General Milley mentions, environments that we may not have air superiority. If you're in a comparable with a near peer, um, they may not be able to have the leisure and the luxury that we've had to evacuate casualties at, at will. We might not have air superiority. Uh, we might have some air superiority, but not as completely as we had in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, we might have a, a mega city scenario where you might be only a quarter mile away from a facility, but you have uh, the burden of the, the city and, and not really being able to move uh, quickly from you know, that quarter mile to a quarter mile where the, where the surgical team uh, might be. How should we train our combat medics going forward? If you look at uh, what's been successful with the Special Forces medics and the Ranger medics and other medics, I, and, and if you look at the fact that the biggest place to make a difference in improving combat casualty survival is in the pre-hospital environment, then, then it's an inescapable conclusion that we're going to have to up the training of our medics. So I think it's extremely important to uh, not just value what a credential is, but train up to the level of the credential, uh, but more importantly to the capability that's going to be needed. You know, I really do believe that the credentialing piece is going to help us a little bit more in the certification, uh, that it's going to be the baseline standard that we can put out there to attain have a pilot program going on with the 82nd Airborne uh, this summer where that medic of the future is going to get trained. This training module that we're looking at is going to be about six months long on top of the 68 whiskey training that everybody gets. And that's the main goal of our program is to really get our students exposed to critically injured and ill patients so that they can understand what it looks like, what it smells like, how to deal with those conditions in, in a stressful environment. Our MTFs, which are health and readiness platforms, are going to be environments, natural environments, uh, in which a medic has repetitions of gauging a patient that presents either well or not so well or somewhere in between. And that's very important for a medic to have that repetition. Uh, being precepted carefully by a licensed and credentialed provider gives the medics repetitions and how they're going to have to look at people uh, from the lens of being experienced or non-experienced. And the more patient contact time a medic has with the patient in one of our MTFs is going to bring us goodness on the battlefield. We have no higher responsibility than the care of the wounded soldier on the battlefield. All of our focus needs to be on how it is that we're going to improve that care to that wounded, ill, or injured soldier on the battlefield of tomorrow. Army Medicine. One team, one purpose. Conserving the fighting strength since 1775.